fall is a good time to plant or transplant things. Um, plants, I think, are really trying to establish a lot of nutrients in their roots before winter. So um, putting them in the ground gives them a chance to really establish that root system a, a little bit before winter. Um, today I'm going to be planting some, uh, some rhododendrons, and there's a little story behind it. Um, earlier this spring, before I was even filming anything for YouTube, I uh, cut back or dug into the ground and took out some of the root structure of some really large, well-established rhododendrons that we have on our property. Uh, they were just kind of spreading out a little bit, and I wanted to, uh, you know, focus them a little bit more into a single kind of a bush. And I knew I wanted to have more rhododendrons down here in our ravine with the creek. So it seemed like the, the right thing to do. Um, if I had it to do over again, I don't think I would do that. I'd probably just buy new rhododendron starts and uh, prune back the existing uh, unwanted branches on the rhododendrons. The, uh, the large rhododendron that I cut those things off of really died back uh, pr pretty severely. It's not dead. Uh, just, you know, a lot, a lot more of a shock for that uh, plant than, than I had intended. Um, but I'm sure it'll be fine in a few years. It'll like, be like nothing happened, I'm sure. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the planting. Oh, I wanted to mention, um, in this area... I've uh, buried some old, rotten branches and log pieces. Um, in the forest, if you think about it, uh, you don't really have to water the trees or the, the bushes. They, they all seem to kind of do well on their own versus, you know, a manicured landscape yard. You kind of always have to be on top of watering and, and uh, making sure the plants don't die. And that's because uh, the forest has had years and years and years of uh, building up uh, organic matter in the soil. And these old rotten log pieces kind of act like sponges for water. And uh, when the roots of the new plant find that, uh, find that uh, wood, they can kind of just draw extra moisture out and um, and uh, keep going through some of the some of the droughts. So my hope is that uh, by burying some of these uh, pieces, I can show you what one of them looks like here. See, this is I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's just really soft and decaying. Anyways, this is ideal for uh, for putting in the ground for what I'm trying to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to it.
slope this steep is, of course, challenging. I wanted to point out that uh, by digging out those rhododendrons in the spring, I was able to plant them in these various size uh, pots with potting soil and some, some of our compost and keep them right up close to the house and uh, over by our chicken coop where I'm literally walking by them every single day and it was super easy for me to make sure they had plenty of water and just kind of baby them along uh, to give them as much of a chance to uh, recover from the shock of being uh, dug out of the ground until now where they're ready to be planted. Hopefully uh, this will all work out and uh, we'll have some very nice rhododendrons growing uh, for years to come.
in the big picture, you really want to plant your trees and the bushes that you want to be substantial uh, landscape features as close to year one as possible so they can have a chance to grow and you can appreciate them for longer. Uh, in this case I had to wait about three years uh, because our ravine was so overgrown with ivy in particular but also some blackberries that it took me that long to remove the ivy from the spots that I wanted. You can't just uh, rip the ivy out and call it good and then plant something. You have to wait for the next year to see what ivy grows back and attack that as well. It's a process of uh, trying to get all the roots out that is uh, more or less never ending, but over the course of two years of attacking it and really, really uh, doing a thorough job, you, uh, you set the ivy back enough that I think it's pretty safe to start planting other things down there. There is one spot in our ravine here where I've left the ivy and that's because it's such a steep area that it's just uh, very very difficult to work on and uh, although I physically could do it uh, I can see down the down the line years years into the future working on that kind of a steep slope constantly trying to uh, pull weeds and make sure things don't keep growing back there that I don't want just was going to be really unworkable so uh, I've left the ivy there to um, to be more or less of a erosion control and uh, and a, a natural block for other weeds actually I'll just have to make sure it doesn't get out of control and take over the whole forest again.